look at this, fantastic, isn't it? This massive satellite dish has come all the way from Australia and was used in some of the Apollo missions. As impressive as it is, I still can't get Radio Luxembourg on it. Welcome to an idiot's guide to space. Cue the music. Right, Alex, we're going to build a rocket. We're going to do something slightly different using this fantastic bit of kit here, which looks like plumbing. Got a pump as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a lot of air pressure in here, and we're going to use that to launch our rocket. So it's really more of a projectile, I'm afraid, than a rocket. Rockets are a great way to talk about Newton's laws of motion and uh, all sorts of physics and uh, we're going to go and do that, but I think I might get you to make another one of these before we go out to the launch pad. What's wrong with this? It's fabulous! It's an excellent first attempt, but... If it were Blue Peter, they'd have seven <laughs> in reserve, wouldn't they? <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Welcome to the planet's surface of Mars. Everybody wants to know what's on Mars. Is there life on Mars? Is there water on Mars? And I've got to be honest with you, this isn't the planet of Mars. Because if it is, it's growing silver birches. However, this is where they test the Mars navigational robots. So Aaron, why are you testing this here? So Harvard Oxford is becoming a centre for uh, researching autonomous navigation for the rovers, which means they can drive themselves on Mars, avoid obstacles and uh, arrive to the target location safely. And when will this be on Mars? So we are working towards ExoMars, which is the European Space Agency project scheduled for 2018. That's quite soon then. Yes, <laughs> we have a lot to do until then. <laughs> So here I am in the clean room, in the clean gear, and it's in here that spacecraft are tested for everything to see just what space can throw at them. Extreme temperatures and the vacuum of space. When it comes to the end of its life, do you get to press a button called Space Junk where you can zap it into another galaxy so nothing crashes into it? Every mission has to have a deorbit plan, and whether that's crashing it into the moon... Are you allowed to do that? Yep. So scientists can get extra information from launching a spacecraft into the moon. It produces a plume, a jet of material that we can study and we can understand a little bit more about the moon's surface. Put some effort into it. Science doesn't come easy. God, I bet I don't have to do this at NASA. <laughs> if you say three, two, one. Can I do Thunderbird five, four, three? Five, <laughs> four, three, two, Thunderbirds are go! Whoa! Let's do it again. 